So what podcast? With Barry Corder, Lord Taco, I'm Brad. Welcome into uh, what is going to be, I think, a very, very important day for uh, the entire Bonnaroo and festival community. Barry, we are going to get some clarification on some massive changes that are going to happen uh, on Bonnaroo, uh, at the Farm of Bonnaroo for 2023. We're going to reflect on what happened on 2022 and uh, see where we all are. Yeah, you know, uh, anybody that's listened to this show knows we're fans. So we come at it as fans. We also come at it, you know, from a little bit of a journalism or whatever. You're in radio. I call it nerd. Nerd, inside baseball, whatever. We like to dive deep. We like to go to the sources and get the information. And uh, this is an episode that sort of, in my opinion, proves what you and I have said from the first time we started doing this podcast is they pay attention and they think about things as a fan. They don't always get it right. Mm-hmm. They didn't get it right last year. And they admit that, as you'll hear. But they, when it's all over, said and done, they sit back and they say, man, what would I have wanted? What would mm-hmm. I want? What do I want next year? And then they do it. And mm-hmm. this, is a, this is a pretty big change, I think. <laughs> Yeah, and, and I think to double back on your point about the journalism thing, yeah, I, I know I, I scoff and call it nerdy, but, I mean, this is sort of the reason why we wanted to do this podcast and this show is because somebody is, is coordinating just the basic logistics of things. And uh, it's one thing to just read information that you on the Internet. Yes, these are words, and yes, these are going to change you know, the way that I get in and out of the, the festival, but let's actually talk to the people that made these decisions, yeah. and let's see how it exactly is going to work, what is it going to look like, and along the way, let's see um, if they you know, picked up some lessons from the years past that informed them of these decisions. It's, it's just a little bit uh, different than reading – um, a page on the website, which is to their point, they're going to they're going to talk about it's going to be a difficult um, thing for some people to maybe understand and navigate. That's why they want to get this message out as clearly and concisely as they can. Uh, and you're going to hear all the ways they're going to do it in the um, in this episode. It's Brad Parker and uh, Corey Smith. You want to uh, talk about their history a little bit before we uh, we jump on with these guys? Well, you, I think you hit nailed it at the end of this conversation um, when you when you made the point that people who are putting Bonnaroo on have to be Bonnaroo people, and you know when they aren't, and you know when they are. And Brad and Corey are both veterans. They attended as fans, and now they work for uh, C3 Presents. They're the guys yeah. making these decisions. I love how you say you just know people that are Bonnaroo. I'm watching uh, – I don't know if you've, you've watched that interview with the Vampire series on AMC. Oh, my God, this show is so good. But it's like other vampires know vampires. You just <laughs> right. see it, and like they're talking on a different waveform. That's how Bonnarooians are. Like right. You just know another Bonnaroo guy. Yeah, <laughs> you just know if you're a real Bonnaroo uh, person That's based right. on literally, uh, you know, you can look at them. I can smell you, Taco. I can smell you that you're a Bonnaroo person. <laughs> can you? Oh. <laughs> That's right. But, but these guys, uh, they, they've been involved in these major changes on how ticketing and how you are decoupling of the ticketing process, as they're calling it, where you can basically a la carte how you experience Bonnaroo. It's a big change and not just for Bonnaroo, but, you know, festivals in general. And I think it, I think it's a reflection of a 20 year old festival that says, here's what we've done to this point. How can we make the experience better for the people who come, not Mm -hmm. just the new person, but as we'll talk about the people like you and I, who have been going for 15 or 18 years, who might've slept in a tent, 15 years ago, but now we don't want to sleep on the grass, you know, um, or, or we can afford a general admission ticket, maybe not a VIP ticket, or maybe we can, how can we figure out, you know, based on our own wants and needs, how to make it work. It's a totally different way of looking at it that, that I'm accustomed to, you know, it used to be just one or the other, right? Yeah. And 
You know, I, the other thing I kept thinking about in this conversation is how much of this have they gleaned from either, yes, the, the Bonnaroo experience, but other festivals, and who sure. else is doing it this way? I, I really don't know. Um, but, y- you know, it, it is a... I'm excited to see it in practice, and, and when I say it, you'll hear Brad and Corey explain it much better than we could, um, but I'm excited to see it in practice and, and see it executed because if so, it goes back to all these things that we've been talking about for the last couple of years, especially when we talked to Jeff Cuellar um, once he left Bonnaroo was that you know these curated experiences are is what's going to start driving um, dollars more than – insert massive lineup here that's right if you can curate an experience experience and and an experience that is so unable to be replicated anywhere else then that's going to be the future and that's sort of what Quayar was alluding to when he was talking about his cruises and that's sort of what bonnaroo has adopted in their new sort of tiers and and packages that they're putting together um, and how it grows from here is is actually pretty exciting. If it works and if it does as well as they think it's going to do, it could really grow into something uh, pretty remarkable. Yeah, the curated part, that's a great point. That's the whole idea behind the curated festivals. It was, if I understand correctly, in the past, the three of us would all go to the same event. We all had the same experience. Now everybody wants what feels like an individual experience, mm-hmm. you know? Maybe I went to, I just did it this way or that way. You know, I didn't, I got to do VIP. I got to do camping. I, you know what I mean? I had some choice in the matter and what we experienced was not something that I could have gotten anywhere else, Mm -hmm. you know, and that's, that's that's what they're trying to do. So, yeah. Plus the other thing about this episode is, um, boy, Taco just couldn't shut up. I, the the guy's a, a wordsmith. He's a motor mouth, is what he is. <laughs> it was it was really tough. It took a lot of self control. Well, let me, let's well let's ask when we're done. I, I want to ask you when we come back when this after this okay. is over. I do. Okay, let's do it. Up. Let's jump into it because we got a lot to talk about, a lot to cover. Uh, the future of Bonnaroo, the present of Bonnaroo, what happened last year. Let's do it with Corey and Brad on the What Podcast. If you're looking at the screen, you can see we've got Brad and Corey, but. If you're not looking, you have no idea who these guys are. Brad, who are you? Uh, I'm Brad Parker. I'm a project manager of U.S. Festivals for C3 Presents. And uh, I like to think that I'm now a, a new kind of mayor of Bonnaroo, but I, I don't mm. know if I can elect myself into that position. I think I have to be elected there. So, Wow. We'll get into that in a minute. You've got a big banana skin to fill. <laughs> As I said to you before, we'll talk about that yeah. in a little bit. Corey, yeah, who, con- context clues, though, that sounds really dirty. I know. Uh, I, meant it, I meant it that way. <laughs> I did it on purpose. Corey, who are you? Yeah, I'm Corey Smith. I actually voted for Brad for mayor of Bonnaroo. Um, <laughs> don't usually share my voting records, but I will in this case. Um, right, yeah, so, I handle, yeah. handle all the marketing for Bonnaroo um, and a few other festivals for C3 Presents. So we, we just got a clue as to the hierarchy here is if Corey voted for you, Brad. So we understand now how this works, right? Corey's my <laughs> boss. He works for me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I work for the people, Barry. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there we go. All right. So obviously the banana w- the uh, banana skin was a reference to Jeff Quayar, uh, who has been on a guest on our show several times before. Also, I've never heard it referred to as banana skin. I know. I that was a that was a <laughs> It's an banana odd choice. Suit. It is an odd choice. <laughs> the banana suit. If you're a longtime listener to this show, you'll know that uh, Jeff Quayar has been on before. He was with AC, and then uh, Live Nation had a similar job to yours, right, Brad? But when you, but, but I, but real quick, when you describe it as banana skin, you make him sound like Buffalo Bill. <laughs> that when he puts on the banana suit, all of a sudden he's, you know, dancing to Goodbye Horses for some reason. Are you saying that's not what I meant? <laughs> I mean, you don't know. <laughs> uh-huh. But anyway, it's a it's a inside joke. Uh, Jeff dressed in a, a banana suit at Moon River here in Chattanooga and said goodbye to people as they were walking out. So anyway, it's a I, I didn't mean to go down that road, but it was funny. So Brad and Corey are with um, our Brad, Brad Steiner and Lord Taco uh, and myself, Barry Quarter. 
to on the what podcast to talk about some big time changes at the upcoming Bonnaroo festival. And, uh, Thank you guys. Can't we, we're so excited for you to join us. And uh, these are big, big, big changes, right? Yeah, I think, um, you know, uh, something that we kind of focus on is that, you know, our first foot forward with Bonnaroo is always the community. Uh, it's such an important part. I think that the Bonnaroo fan has a lot more identity than what you see with, uh, you know, fans of, of, other large festivals in the U.S. It's more of a passive fandom with other big festivals. Where at you know Bonnaroo, it, it is it's cliche to say, but it is sort of a lifestyle for a lot of people. And so we try to keep them in mind. And through you know for a litany of reasons, uh, Bonnaroo has been through some hard times over the past three years. And so we are always looking for ways to make it more accessible and a more a, a better experience and easier experience for our fans and part of that is this new uh what we're calling decoupling of uh of our festival ticket and our uh camping and or parking um accommodation so uh that's what we're here i guess to, to preach about with you guys today it's a conscious <laughs> uncoupling yes <laughs> yes exactly. got it <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. I and and uh, I've talked to you guys before, and and I want to just sort of let's. It's a lot. It really it's a it's a lot more than and it sounds like it in that. And what I want to do is just sort of introduce it and get it going. And then I know Brad and uh, Taco are going to have some some questions, and I think that's what you guys want. You kind of want, you know, where are the holes. I think my question to you guys when we talked to, several weeks ago was who's getting screwed, you know? And that's just the, that's, uh, you know, the cynic in me, the whatever in me. And, uh, and you, you had it, you know, you don't think anybody is. In fact, in some cases, people are going to be saving money on tickets. Right. But, uh, so that's sort of the setup. It's a whole new way of camping. Um, the way you described it to me is sort of like going to Disney. And I, I thought that was a pretty good analogy you can buy the full ticket, stay on site, do everything, or you can stay off site and kind of a la carte it. So that's sort of the setup. So I don't, I don't know, Corey, you, you seem to be the one masterminding all this. You want to go ahead and dive in or that much credit, but I'm the one tasked with explaining it to people. So I've definitely <laughs> been right. getting fairly good at that recently. Um, so let me interrupt real quick. Does that make sense? To, uh, to Brad, my Brad and, and Taco, does that seem like the best way to go forward or y'all want to ask a question first? No, go ahead. Hit, let's okay. hit it. All right. Well, ba ba real quick, Barry, I want to go one more level on the Disney World analogy because I think it's kind of important in context. And it's that really what we've done here using the Disney World um, model is just because you buy the most expensive pass that's going to get you in all the parks and all the fast pass for the rides and all that doesn't mean you have to stay at the Ritz Carlton or have the most expensive offering there is for how you're staying at Disney World. That's kind of the key here. If you want to be, if you want to buy the most expensive pass to Epcot and the fast pass and all of that, but you want to stay at the Motel 6, you can do it. But if you want to stay at the Ritz Carlton in a suite and have room service, but you want to, have the cheapest general admission and wait in the lines and do all of that, then you can also do that. And, and that's not necessarily what was possible before. So that's kind so, of. So in, in your world, in your world, what is the Ritz Carlton and what is the Motel 6? So the Motel 6, I mean, is, is, you know, the way that a lot of our fans enjoy, enjoy and why they enjoy Bonnaroo is the simple, you show up with your car and your own tent and you figure it out yourself. And we don't, we don't help you at all do anything like we show you where to park your car and then we just leave you and say, all right, we'll see you on Monday when you're leaving. Um, the Ritz Carlton would be, uh, you know, you, you find a way to get there. And when you show up, we've got an RV for you and your friends and we've got a concierge and we've got someone that is, uh, you know, giving you meals and you've got electricity and you've got AC and you've got a golf cart person that's going to drive you around to the different shows you want to go to. Like that's the full 
premium experience. And in between all of those things, between A and Z, there's other options that I can you know, I can start adding to the package, right? Yeah. So okay. we've got you know we've got a full menu per se of options that kind of connect the dots anywhere between those two. We can. Uh, you know, the next step from the Motel 6, let's say the Holiday Inn Express, is going to be, you know, you show up and we're going to provide a basic tent for you and and a sleeping bag or a, a, whatever other options there might be. And then the next step from that is going to be you show up, we're going to provide you uh, a very nice um, pre-pitched tent option that, uh, you know, might have an AC unit in it and it's got two... Uh, twin size air mattresses and you've got um, you know some other amenities that can be added in the mix there and you can kind of go from as scaled back as possible to you know not having to think about anything except how do I get to Manchester and then once you're there we take the rest of it so um, that's and just kind as of- an aside is 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 there is there a certain reason why you wanted to do this other than, you know, making it more accessible? Are you finding more people traveling in from out of state and having these problems? I say this because, you know, I've now lived in New Orleans and now Brooklyn for the last three years. And one of the biggest issues for me was I just can't travel all the way to Tennessee. Yeah, I don't have where, – what am I traveling with? I can't bring a tent with me onto the plane. I can think I, it's a, let me jump. Let me jump. Can I jump? Can chime in. Go ahead, Barry. I was just going to jump in real quick and say, Corey, I've never heard you explain it better than that right there. That was perfect. <laughs> well, me neither, because it was the first time. <laughs> no, um, I'm, kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I had to. I had to do. Or Brad's that. getting roasted already. I'm, I'm. You know, I'm kidding. Um, but to to your question, Brad, uh, Brad Steiner, it was it was. I think you guys told me you figured out that. Uh, I don't remember what the percentage was, but a lot of your the percentage of ticket buyers were buying these sort of package deals, right? Yeah. And, so I think so- I think one of the big catalysts is you know last year was obviously a down year sales wise for us as far as you know full capacity on the farm, um, and yet we managed to sell what was it, Brad? Ninety eight percent of our pre pitched accommodations that we had on site. Um, and you know one of my jobs is to kind of look at where people are coming from um you know what those people from other areas are buying and do our best to you know study those trends and inform ourselves to make the experience better based on that and the truth is we're seeing a lot more people fly in than we used to um going from big cities like new york and chicago if you don't Um, mind me asking what's the percentage breakdown like um i don't have those numbers in front of me unfortunately but yeah they're they're definitely they've gone up every year for the last three or four years so you're brad are you asking the percentage of people that are flying in yeah just just because i remember us talking uh, about this in the past barry and barry you can probably inform this better than i can because i don't remember but i remember at some point we asking the question how many people are in and around the 90 mile you know sort of circle of of manchester and and it was a significant amount right it was mostly all people driving in and i wonder how much that's changed probably in the last five years so i i don't know that we you know we work with with um the tourism arm in nashville to kind of try to keep a pulse on these things, looking at hotel rooms and flights on that weekend and the week leading up. And there's anecdotal information uh, that I don't have in front of me, but what I can still say for sure, which has been the case for a while with Bonnaroo because of kind of the national appeal that it has is that, you know, no state makes up more than 5% of the attendees of the show. And that includes Tennessee. No so, kidding. Wow. Um, we, we still are able to pull from now, I know people just just because of that fact doesn't mean that those people are flying. Like sure. I hear people all the time that are like, I drove 14 hours from <laughs> yeah. North Dakota or sure. yeah, wherever. Yeah, for sure. So not to say that those people are forced to don't have the ability to bring their stuff with them. But I know that a mixture of two things has been happening. I think that's driving that number for the pre-pitch. I think one is people flying and coming to, to Manchester via Nashville or Atlanta and not having the ability to bring their own stuff with them. And I think the second one is that we are moving into 
uh, a generation of fans that just they didn't grow up going to KOAs and camping in their backyard and they might not have the knowledge or materials to do these things, but they want they but but they are open to that. We just have to kind of lead them to water a little bit. And I think that that's what we're trying to do by offering more, you know, show up and have a good time options. Guys, I've 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 tried to tell this story in a, in a thousand different ways. I, uh, turns out not a camper, um, <laughs> pretty knew? big diva. <laughs> and, uh, I only do it once, once a year and I need so many amenities to make this work, which is why camp nut butter, nut butter looks the way that it does, why it has 700 square feet of carpeting and a couch and, you know, this, these ridiculous amenities, because I just couldn't do this, uh, 10 years ago like Barry was doing it. You know, I just, I couldn't just show up and sweat and, and, you know, cry into my hands every night because I was so dirty and sweaty. No, I had to, you know, make this thing more comfortable. And if you're doing this for me, if you're doing this for me, it feels so much easier on me when I'm making my decision, especially in a landscape that really only has you know, for a guy like me, three, four options around the country. You know, I'm going to get one good trip a year, and is it going to be Coachella? Is it going to be Hangout? Is it going to – you know, it, this really helps. We are we are actually doing this for you, Brad. Like As you should. Awesome. As you should, yeah. yeah. Uh, you, didn't bring, you didn't talk about the uh, added hair uh, guy <laughs> that gets to travel with me at all times. Uh, I'd appreciate that. But so, so that's when you actually get on site. Um, what happens before you get on site? Um, I know there was a lot of, you know, chatter about the toll booth from years past. So this is, um, you know, something that we, I think have tried and been great at trying to be transparent about. And it's the fact that it's hard on our team and makes a bad experience for the fan. If all 60, 70,000 people, 80,000 people try to show up at once. And so this is where the idea of this um, daily entry came from is like, hey, if we just have an idea on how many people are coming each day, we can staff appropriately. We can try to make it to where all of those people, regardless of when they're arriving, uh, have a great experience and can get onto the site and get their camp set up in a timely manner. And so the whole idea behind that was, listen, we're not going to we're not trying to necessarily make this a penalty to fans by having to choose, but the Bonner community has always been a like, you know, we want to help, let's help each other. And so we felt like this was a, a fan base that would be very receptive to us being honest with them and saying, hey, we're asking you to do this because it's going to help us and therefore help your fellow Bonneruvians by just helping us expect. Because honestly, guys, in the past, it's kind of been, you know, we had historic numbers that kind of told us when people were going to be showing up. But a lot of it was us sitting there on Tuesday going, well, I wonder if we're going to get crushed tonight or <laughs> if we're going to get crushed tomorrow morning or because there's all sorts of things that affect that. Right. People are coming from everywhere. You get storms that go through parts of the country and people go, well, we're going to we're not going to leave tonight. We're going to wait till in the morning and leave at 8 a.m. And so there's all these different variables. So that was an attempt for us to try to be. Uh, super transparent with our fans and let them know that, hey, if they're willing to, to work with us and, and commit to a time and tell us when they're coming, then we're going to try and make that experience as best as possible. For and them. that's something that's going to continue next year. But but I guess the reason I, I bring it up entirely is because it, it sounds as though with some of these a la carte options, it sounds as though it would be a lot easier on you and pro probably everyone if it started flying in a little bit more. Uh, if if you took some of these options in front of you, it would help a little bit uh, alleviate the traffic issue, alleviate some of the, the headaches that you guys see before you even get on site. Well, I mean, I, that might be true to an extent, but the truth of the matter is, regardless of we're, if we're building it for them or they're bringing it, like they still have to get there somehow. Yeah, that's true. So that's true. Whether, whether it's now, you know, a shuttle bus of 20 people versus 20 different cars or 10 different cars, like... Manchester is just, you know, we're the we become the eighth biggest city in the state whenever Bonnaroo happens because it's just the infrastructure is not there. Like it's and that's part of what makes Bonnaroo cool and what Bonnaroo is yeah. so special. So it's a delicate balance of being able to maintain 
you know, th- this camping experience that is so much part of the soul of what Bonnaroo is, but also making it easier for us to get new fans and introduce a new generation of music fans to Bonnaroo. Because, I mean, guys, we're going, we're into our third decade now as, mm-hmm. as Bonnaroo. Like, the truth is, there are a lot of new customers out there that have no idea what Bonnaroo is. And those are the people that we're trying to appeal and convince them to come down to Manchester once again. Yeah. And that's, that's a part point that I think hit me as we were, you and the, you and Corey and I were talking earlier is, you know, for Brad and I, this is year 18, you know, a lot of fans have no idea what happened 18 years ago and don't care. Uh, but Brad, you started to ask, I thought a question. A lot of fans aren't even 18 yet, Barry. That's the other thing too. Great point. But, uh, you started to ask what I thought uh, when you were asking that, it made me think of another question, Corey, what will it look like? Like if I go online in, in a couple of weeks when this becomes, you know, legit, how am I, how is it going to work? How do I pick and choose? What's the, what's the menu going to look like? So this part is actually, um, another really exciting upgrade that's kind of coming as a, you know, consequence of uh, making these changes. Um, Last year, it was kind of a three-step system where you would buy a Cineroo ticket. And if you bought certain Cineroo tickets, it would then determine what camping or accommodations you could then buy. Um, And the way we're doing it this year completely simplifies that. It's down to just a two-step program. You pick the center ticket you want, whether that's GA, GA+, um, VIP, or Platinum. And then you go to the accommodations page and pick you know how you want to camp. Um, and we've actually been working on a new interface where instead of going through a list of 40 different line items like you did last year, um, you can kind of see where everything lays out on a map of the campgrounds now. And you'll be able to click each little section um, that has, you know, sort of a brief subtitle, whether that's clamping or tent only. And you can see exactly um, what sort of camping options are available in each of those sections. Um, and then go ahead and purchase right there at the website. And, and does that include where I get to pick wh- where I get to camp? You I get to pick to exactly the, uh, even the pod um, where I want to be? Um, yes and no. So for some of the pre-pitched accommodations, you'll have a pretty good idea of where you're going to camp. Um, if you come GA, we are going to do it pretty much exactly like we did last year, which is, you know, if you get there early on Tuesday, you're going to be parked basically right in front of the arch. Um, and we'll kind of fill it in back, um, after that. That's smart. So some some of the pre-pitched accommodations, um, will have, you know, the perk of knowing exactly where you're going to be. And in in some cases, that will be pretty close to the main entrances of Centerio. Yeah, Brad, all I was going to add to that was, you know, long term, we want to move to a system. I mean, listen, with with GA, uh, it's never going to be where we can guarantee someone a specific plot of land or even an area of land because of just the nature of how we have to load 50,000, 60,000 people into the site. But we do want to work for towards a system where, uh, you know, if you are in a, a little bit more of an elevated area, you might even get down to picking the specific campsite that you're in, like you would look at a seat inside of a venue. Um, but uh, that's not going to be something that's available for 23. But this is all part of taking steps towards uh, just more and more customization uh, and letting people know kind of what they're getting into when they get there. And then the idea is that we can even get as granular as, okay, I've purchased a pre-pitched tent that I'm going to show up. Okay, well, when you get there, here's a list of things that you can say that you want in there when you arrive. Do you want a cooler? Do you want a extension cord? Do you want, you know, all of these different uh, accessories that you can just say, yeah, I want those. And then whenever you show up, that will be that customized experience will be ready for you with your tent that you've already you know that's already ready for you when you when you show up just real quick though if if i and this is this is me being an idiot idiot because i've only driven in ga one time as a ticket buyer but if i get there early on tuesday yes i could be close to center if i wanted but could i also say i'd like to be over there 
Can I pick and choose if I show up on Tuesday? Be like, uh, I'd like to be by the woods. You, yes and no to an extent. You you would be able to, you know, let, let's let's look at a specific plot of land, right? That's that's twenty acres. Uh-huh. When you show up on Tuesday, our traffic our, our traffic team is going to automatically start filling that twenty acre plot from front to back. If you decided that you were going to drive to the back of that 20 acre plot and park, uh-huh. no one's going to say anything, but you're not going to just be able to go, well, what Got if it. I go to that plot that's way yeah. over there? Like, you're still going to be able to kind of move around with certain parameters of where we're filling because all, all of this has to do with, you know, we have a very extensive traffic plan and team that put together to make this flow. And when you get people that go rogue, it kind of. It's chaos. Just chaos. Up. Yeah. yeah, or go bad. Well, I think as another as we like another to call thing, it. Um, <laughs> along that line of thought too is, um, like with the daily entry, especially like my first Bonnaroo. I think we waited in line seven hours to get into the campgrounds, and you know we're we're down to what was the max last year, Brad? Maybe we 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 kind of kept left. yeah we we kind of kept tabs this past year with our new entry and everything, and from what we could tell the longest any vehicle sat in line to get in was about an hour and 15 minutes, mm-hmm. which is smoking. Like, smoking. Yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> yeah. I know stories of people like 23, 24 hours yeah, sitting in we, line to get yeah. in the bottom. Well, we I, had- I, you know what? I hadn't thought about it the way until you said it, Brad, was um, you're in a remote space for a reason. Right? That's the draw of it. And then to get to that remote space, we're like, damn it, why am I not here quicker? <laughs> you know, like that's why have I? To, how dare you not put an off ramp right into my exit, uh, right into my campsite? How dare you? Yeah. Uh, but it's a really good point. You're there for a reason. You're supposed to be out in the middle of a farm for you know. It's the middle of a farm. <laughs> yeah, an actual literal farm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. People don't understand that. Uh, the, you and I talked, uh, Corey. You and Brad and I talked last week, and uh, I think it's fairly significant. I mean, these are big changes and. And we'll keep explaining them, but the ticket price is also in some cases coming down, right? Depending on how you do this, and uh, that's no small uh, detail. I don't, I don't think that's true. I mean, yeah, the last so I mean, when I left Bonnaroo last year, uh, six months ago or three months ago, whatever it was, uh, you know, I was told that the cost had gone up some like forty percent. You know, so uh, assumption was. Everything else is going to have to go up, but you guys are actually figuring this out and figuring out a way that some ticket prices will go down, right? Yeah, I think one of the big priorities when we were doing this was what can we do to make the GA camping and center experience more accessible and ultimately cheaper? Um, And then also not mess with that experience because it's tried and true. In my eyes, it's sort of the OG way to do Bonnaroo. I, I look at going GA to Bonnaroo as a rite of passage like you would Burning Man, you know? And so as we were going through this, I mean, you know, you're able to sell more of these more expensive, um, you know, nice accommodations. Um, and I, I think that gives us an opportunity to, you know, make it a little bit cheaper for the GA Center ticket and the GA camping experience. Um, so that's definitely something Brad and I are super proud of. And to jump on that, I mean, I think the, not to put words in your mouth, but the other point is some people have the money and don't mind spending it for those nicer accommodations, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, you know, the Bonnaroo at the end of the day is a business that has to operate like any other business. And there's a reason that you can buy a great quality base model Honda Civic for very cheap. It's because People also buy $70,000 vehicles from Honda, and there's, a, there's more ability on the top end to have flexibility and, and, and to protect and, and have a better experience for your consumers on the lower end. And Bonnaroo's always been built on GA fans. I mean, that's 85, 90% of the people that buy tickets to our show uh, are going to have that, that, that experience. So how can we help those 90% and maybe put a little bit more weight on the shoulder of the 10% that don't, that don't mind that can take that, you know, Corey, you, you mentioned that you sold 
what, 90, 90 95% of the pre, um, you know, pre-set up, what'd you call it? I can't remember the, the term that you use. We call them pre-pitched. Pre-pitch, okay. How many was that? And how much is that growing this year? That's a Brad, probably, question. So I don't I don't know the number uh, the the specific number of what that was. If I do quick math in my head, it was it was maybe around you know eight to ten percent of the of the entirety of of tickets we sold. But that's that's compared to you know let's say three to five percent of years uh, of years before. So. We're trying to keep up with the need and demand and, and get more of that inventory to have more of those offerings because we see that growing as a per cap of, of our whole fandom. But as a, but as a base, th- there will be more available this year than last year. Yes. And okay. potentially more options, like newer options as well. Um, but that all is pending. You know, there's still tons of supply chain issues from the pandemic that we are dealing with. So... We're, we're trying to not only expand the quantity, but the offerings that are there. Um, and we'll continue to do that, you know, forever. Yeah. Probably. S- side note, because I, we I haven't talked to anybody from C3 since since um, Hurricane Ida. Whose idea was it to send all the tents down to New Orleans? <laughs> that because was, that was a major deal there, by the yeah. way. And uh, I don't know if anybody from the city ever said thank you, but thank you. I mean, because that was a major, major deal. And the wife actually helped unload those. She was part of the volunteer group that unloaded the tents. And, you know, you drive through the city. It was tough to see some, you know, some homeless camps with them. But I saw all of these Bonnaroo tents and they were everywhere in the city. And it was it was a it was a very big deal. So I mean, thank you. You know, well, thanks for saying that. And that was a decision that, you know, our upper leadership team, we got together and ultimately like we were, you know, it was a very sad time for us as, as people who had worked so hard to keep pushing this show through a pandemic. And then ultimately to have it canceled because of something like that was heartbreaking to say the least. But we, you know, the nature of Bonnaroo and our fans and our team is that we always try to find the silver lining and a little bit of light in the darkness and, we knew people were in need, and we had a way to help them out. So that's what we did. It was it was an easy an easy uh, an easy yes. I just want to. It's it's interesting to me to to think about this because it could, again we've been doing it for so long. But the perception it, of Bonnaroo is that it's a sweaty, nasty, dirty, you know, camping in a tent thing. At least it was. I don't know that it's. It that can way. be if you want that. By it the way, be. we uh, we that's camp exactly. with one of those guys. <laughs> That's exactly yeah, there is. That's, <laughs> that's exactly right. Um, but what I find interesting about this is it shows the progression. You know, it was kind of that. You bring a tent, you sleep outside of your car, but those same people are now 15 years, 20 years older. They don't want to sleep on the grass anymore. You know, we ex- we and I put myself in that position. I like a little comfort. I like a little air conditioned uh, porta potty and a hot shower and a, you know, some shade. So this is you guys trying to accommodate not just the young, the eighteen year old who just graduated from high school, you know, is having his first big festival experience, but also, you know, old guys like me who want to hear the great music, but don't want to sleep on the grass. But I mean, Barry, I think it's funny you say it because. Corey, you mentioned Bonnaroo being like this rite of passage. And I kind of see the same thing with like how people choose to experience Bonnaroo because I I can't tell you the people that are in our platinum program. I can't tell you how many of them are like, oh, I've been every year. I finally just said, I finally just concluded that, you know, I deserve to have this experience and spend a lot of time. And that's how I, that's how I'm doing it because I slummed it the first 10 years and now I don't want to slum it anymore. Yep. That's exactly right. I need the AC. I need a bathroom and a hot shower, you know. The yeah. year before the pandemic, I went RV for the first time, and it was a absolute game changer. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not ready yeah. for that. I, it's one of those, I, to me, it's like I had an old guy on a golf course tell me, don't ever drink a $100 bottle of wine because you can't go back. <laughs> 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 so, anyway. 
I, I, but I, it is a rite of passage, but, you know, it. I, I only need to do it once. I, <laughs> uh, I did it once. I don't ever need to do that again. Um, so other than those changes, what else are you guys preparing for, um, you know, after the ticket is purchased? I mean, I don't know, Corey, what you want to hint on. But oh, I knew it. The Squarch is coming back. Squarch uh, is back. Oh, I knew no. it. The squarch is dead and gone. It's buried <laughs> deep under the soil of the farm, and it will never see the light of day again. Um, the second entrance is coming back. You know, that was a real uh, point for us this past year from a customer service perspective. Well, so, let, let's stop right there because I think that's going to be the lead. Um, I hate to tell you, but uh, what happened? What was the decision? Um, was, it, was it capacity reasons? I mean, listen, the, I don't want to dig too, too much into it and dig up. Well, I do. But, but <laughs> I want names. We want ultimately, names. <laughs> ultimately, ultimately, yes, it, it, was, it was the fact that um, we knew with the amount of people that we had on site and the tickets that we sold that uh, we could operate without having that. There's obvious expenses that we can save by uh, not having to have staffing and all of that 24 seven over at a second entrance. And um, we made the decision and, and, and quickly found out that, you know, that wasn't something that uh, was viewed as a right decision in the face of our fans. And we heard that message loud and clear. And I think we've corrected our course a little and, uh, it will be back and fully, fully running whenever people show up this year. Well, that's the spirit of Bonnaroo, man. I mean, you're 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 able to do what you think is best, and if it doesn't work, you admit it and you move on. And that's exactly what the you know, that's what the people before you did, and and what the people after you will do. And um, it's it's right of you. Just real quick though, how many people does it take to operate an uh, entrance twenty four seven? Uh, I mean, it, that's, there's not a super direct answer on that. The way, the way that we calculate it is we know how many people we can process per hour in one lane. So we kind of divide that number by hour by how many total people we have. So the answer is it's not really about huh. the number of entrances. It's about the number of lanes. So we could have, we could have doubled the amount of lanes at the arch and it would have processed the exact same as having two completely separate entrances. It's really all about volume and uh, how many lanes we've got going at one time. And the cool thing about the arch, in my opinion, as someone who's worked on the festival for a while and was there as a fan before, is that I don't necessarily, I don't want to wait in line forever, but I don't want to be rushed through the arch because I'm taking photos of my friends and I'm soaking in the full experience. So we, you know, we decided instead of shrinking down either that it was best to get rid of one that wasn't the photo op and the magic mm. moment and just focus on the one that people come to see. I mean, that's a very recognizable Heard. icon in the festival world, in my opinion, maybe in yeah. just in general. But yeah, it's true. 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 All right. So other than um, the second entrance, what else? I mean. Corey, do you, I mean, is there anything you want to tease? I mean, I mean I think... we definitely, I, you know, I was, I, I, I've been telling the story. Uh, our creative director, Anna, and I were at uh, Herbie this past year um, having a glass of wine and just talking about the festival. Was it a $100 bottle of wine? Because no. I heard you can never no, go back from that. Uh, <laughs> Take my word. talking about it. Standard <laughs> issue. <laughs> but we were, we were standing there just talking and we were like, like, why have we never named the campgrounds before? Um, and so we started just going down this space themed rabbit hole uh, to the soundtrack of Herbie Hancock um, and came up with this whole fun, basically, theme and identity for the campgrounds this year. Um, I think that's about all I'm going to say about it, but it's definitely. Uh, am, I, am, I, am I guessing that they also correlate with what's happening inside the pods? Is- could I make that assumption? There's there's definitely a naming convention. Um, okay. that'll be helpful. But I think I think the general spirit of it is just an opportunity for our fans to have fun with it. 
Um, well, well, to be no. fair, there, there, back in the day, they did have like Camp Marty McFly and Camp yeah. Doc Brown. Um, yes, this is um, this is definitely in that in the spirit of that. Um, okay. But unfortunately, there were far too many names. <laughs> back then to, to really build yeah, up what because, I did. There were like, there were, there were about 75 different yeah. campsites. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't help. Brad, I think um, the overall tease that Corey and I would leave you all with, and it's been obvious since 2019, is that, uh, you know, we're doing everything we can to make the experience at your campsite better, whether that's adding the necessities that make it easy to live out there or more programming that you don't have to walk as far to enjoy and see and see great bands and hear good music. And so you're going to continue to see the campgrounds at Bonnaroo take their own identity and have more programming and see bigger artists doing things out there. And all of that's going to play in with this, you know, decoupling and new accommodation thing that allows people to kind of roam anywhere and there not be walls between the VIP campers and the GA campers and all of that. It's just like, uh, you know, we're trying to create a festival within a festival out there. And I think we're doing a good job at it. Well, that's another thing too. The, the, it explain the, the difference between the what you say the VIP wall and the GA thing. So everybody's sort of camping together. That's not even a, that's not even a thing anymore, huh? So it, it, it's a thing in the sense of you you are buying and paying to be in the area where, uh, you know, your the accommodation type that you want is located the same way that you would pick, you know, your room in your hotel based on what kind of room you need at Disney World. But, but, but my GA ticket's not going to get me on the VIP hill. It not within Cineru, but here but that that's kind of the process of this, right, is. We are now defining everything as what's inside Cineru and what's outside. There used to be a, a, a barrier of entry even into the VIP camp, That's right. Route, right? That's right? But now that is, that is a free for all in the sense of people exploring and going through different campsites. Now, when you're inside of Cineru, that is specifically dictated by what ticket you buy. If it's a GA, GA plus, VIP, or platinum. Okay, well, you just, you just, you just made me think of something. When, v, when, I, when you've had people buy VIP in the past, VIP has gotten um, special shows. They've gotten the buffet. They've gotten – We never you know, saw that, that. Yeah, they were in their they, own universe. They were in their own world, and they got access to, like, Adirondack chairs and that hill. Yes. Those things don't exist anymore for VIP, huh? So – no, I, it, it's not fair to say that they don't exist. What's happening is the value of those things is now going to be connected with the experience inside Cineru. Therefore, therefore, the camping experience can be a little cheaper because those amenities aren't attached to it. So, are you? Mo- wait a second. Are you moving the wall around the hill, and the hill's now going to be part of Cineru? No, the wall is the wall is the barrier into the venue, what we consider Cineru. So that is. Think of that as like the wall into Bridgestone Arena. Like that is still there uh-huh. because to get okay. in there, you have to have a ticket to the show. Uh-huh. But to go to, you know, your favorite bar down the street on Broadway, you can do whatever you want to do. You just got to have a ticket to get into Bridgestone. And that is the same thing with Cineru. There, There's still a barrier there. Like you have to have some sort of ticket to get into there. Um, I hear, and I, I hate to belabor this point. Uh, because I know Barry's screaming to make this joke, but can can a GA camper go to the hill that was moved? Can they walk to that? There's a VIP hill that you can watch the main stage. You're talking can about you, the mound in yes, Cineru. It's the hill. The that's, the hill. That's, that's inside. That so that's inside. That's not part of the camping world at all. So you could you could if you wanted to access the mound um, at the main venue in Centeru at the what stage, you can buy a VIP Centeru ticket and you would have access to that. And if Got you wanted it. to, you could buy a car camping pass um, out in the campgrounds. Got so, it. And another point there good, is good, good, good. That to makes... accomplish that experience is actually considerably cheaper than VIP has been in the past. That's okay. Thank you. That makes a now lot I of get sense. it. Yeah, yeah, that 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 makes a lot of sense. Um, 
Okay, so you mentioned uh, making your campsite better. Will you be making my campsite better and moving me back to where guests used to be in the woods? Um, because I heard that wasn't there anymore, and I'd like to talk to somebody about that. <laughs> we want well, trees. I can't promise that you will uh, uh-huh. be able to get back there where you had been in the past. Wow. That's, That's all I, I, I don't. I don't approve of this. I, uh, I need Listen, to talk to someone. Can I talk to Danny Bonner, Bonnaroo? Uh, we're about to get kicked off the show now. <laughs> I, <laughs> I planted just my broke own Brad's tree. Heart. I planted my own tree back there 15 years ago, and I watched it grow. Yeah. Well, I mean, I listen, Brad. I want to. I want to just say something because of you mentioning mm-hmm. that. Um, you know, that was a really cool part of the experience for Bonnaroo for people who were close to our staff or the artist or whatever for a long time. But part of what we realized as a company and as Bonnaroo is that we weren't paying for it. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's not even, it's not even that we recognize that we weren't paying for it. It's that we were keeping the best real estate on the entire property away from our fans. And that wasn't, that ultimately is what chose us to drive that to be something that is available publicly. It is the best lot of land in that entire oh, farm. Yes, yes, it is. Without, without Which is why I do not want to leave it. Cam, nut butter. <laughs> yeah, we had it. We were spoiled. Let me I'm ask happy you to direct you to one of our premium concierge to get you settled <laughs> for, your, uh, for, your experience, for your 2023 experience. Uh, uh-huh. Well played. Give us some dates. What are what's coming up? What are the key dates that people listening to this need to put on their calendar? I mean the Yeah, sorry, I don't have my calendar in front of me. So we are gonna be sharing all the details of this information that we've talked about today um on November seventeenth, um, which is a Thursday. And then we'll be doing our Black Friday pre sale. Um, as we have in the past on the 25th. So that's when people can start looking for us to, you know, release this in full and they'll, they'll have access to the website a full week before the pre-sale starts, um, with the new system so they can play around, see exactly what's available, make their plans, talk to their friends, et cetera. Um, and you know, I, I think we're probably going to have some sort of whether it's on Reddit or through Instagram, probably in AMA the Monday before the pre-sale, um, just so our fans can have an opportunity to get their questions together and get a answer directly from us. Because, I mean, we're making this as easy as you know we can to explain, but anytime you've got a, an event this large and this many moving pieces and you're trying to communicate it through social media and a website, uh, we definitely understand that that's not easy. Um, we want everybody to have an opportunity to get a straight answer to their questions um, and, you know, make the best, you know, put put these new options together and kind of create the best experience that they can for what they want to get out of honor this year. And, and side note, if it would help uh, after this this episode is released, if we have questions that come in, feel free to drop them to us, the what underscore podcast or, or, or on the email, and we'll send them to you directly. And um, next episode, we'll go through any of the answers that you guys might want to share, uh, if that helps as well. The, after the Black Friday date, then what happens? I'm assuming is next on your calendar a lineup? Rue Clues. Rue Clues. Rue clues are coming back. You'll be getting rue clues through the end of November and through December. Okay. And then, um, you know, I don't want to give any exact dates for the lineup yet, but I'd say take a look at the middle of January. Yeah, I'm going to guess January 10th is my date. <laughs> I'm going to go January 10. It's either 10 or 17. You can uh, make your bets now. Pencil that in. And, you know, okay. I, I know Brad will say this too, but we're really excited about how the lineup's shaping up so far. It's. It's yeah, the other big lead is Taylor Swift is headlining Bonnaroo. Congratulations, <laughs> guys! Uh, well, no, in, I, in the spirit of in the spirit of the Reddit threads, we can put uh, we can put Taylor in the not in, in the absolutely not happening because she just announced her uh, Nashville <laughs> Nissan Stadium show date. Yeah, so, and, and didn't Dolly damn. say she isn't touring anymore, so he can scratch her off too? Well, this wouldn't be a stop tour, up. Barry. This would be a just a yeah, stop up and say, "Hey, everybody!" Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I l- let me let me ask a generic question. If we still have a few minutes, um, 
Where do you think last year, if you want to use this term, went wrong? Where do you think that like the disconnect was? Is it the economy? Is it um, the festival landscape in general? Was it the lineup? What do you think it was? I, Corey, I'll take that one if you want me to. Um, yeah, that sounds I, great. <laughs> uh, Brad, I think it's, uh, well, it's all, it's everything that you just said, but the, but the main contributing factors, um, one, people uh, have more options than ever coming out of the pandemic and less money to spend than ever. So they're forced to make harder decisions. Um, I think that mixed in with the fact that you know, we had a rough three years as an industry and as a festival with customer service through cancellations of COVID and the uh, uh, hurricane cancellation last year. And so I think our Bonnaroo fans were a little um, burned, not by any fault of, of us or themselves. It was the circumstances that were out of, of all of our control. And I think some of them decided they were just going to take a year as a breather. And the people that came had an incredible time. We had our best survey feedback that we've ever had. Uh, I think 96% of people said that they would come back next year. So we, um, we feel super confident that we're going to get some of the OGs back and we're going to get people that came for the first time uh, this year to come back next year. And it's going to be a a really great, um, uh, you know, Bonnaroo, just me speaking personally as, a, as, as someone who has it near and dear to my heart every day that I go to work, uh, it deserves to be the top at the top of the throne of festivals in the world, not just not just camping festivals, not just American festivals, like it deserves to be up there. And I think that uh, Corey and myself and our whole team are, are, you know, determined to make that the case uh, moving forward. So that's what we're working on. I totally agree with you. And if I can just interject for a second, I know that um, you, you used something that was so, that hit me straight to the core, needed a breather. As a guy who, um, who didn't go last year, for a, a multitude of reasons. At the end of the day, Brad, what you said is exactly right. I just needed a year off. For everything, all the turmoil in the world, all the turmoil in my life, all of like the moving parts and then the economy, it just, it just was too much to swallow, right? It's just one too many thing to add to my list. And, you know, you add, you add on top of it, and this is just being totally frank with you, it was just a really subpar lineup for me. And... um when you have the headwind like that, something's got to cut through. And, you know, I'm sure. back. I'm back, though. I'm coming back. Let me, yeah. uh, let me well, even, you fix my campsite, uh, and then I'll be back. Let me even jump the on. Line, even the lineup, you know, the perception of the lineup, some fans. Uh, sure. I, the, go, just to that point, like, even the lineup was affected by the fact that artist availability was hard because of so many festivals yeah. being out there. Yeah, they had so many um, options. So even even that's something that you know we do the best with what we're given. But it's it pe people sometimes think that you know if we want the Rolling Stones, we just get the Rolling Stones. Right. It's that's like, right. No, there's a lot of variables that go into that. Happen. That's right. And and by the way, but what you said about Bonner is exactly right. It means so much to uh, like all five of us in this room, and it's something that I, I it's the greatest week of my life every single year. And even I as a as a absolute hardcore talk about OG since year two, even I was like, I just got to take a year off. I just got to take a year. Well, off. let me, let me add the other side of that. It's Cause taco and I went and, uh, yep. it was hot. It was hot guys. I mean, there was, there were times on Thursday and Friday that I wished I were anywhere else. <laughs> it was hot. Hey, that's, that sounds like every Bonnaroo. At well, one that's point true. you say to yourself, I don't know that's if I could true. do another I, day. It, and then I'm it ropes so you right whiny. back in. And, but uh, Taco and I, was it Friday night was or Saturday night? I think it was, well, Friday night was when you put on your whatever costume and disappeared. <laughs> So Saturday night <laughs> is banana skin <laughs> is banana skin. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, we had the conversation. I can't wait to come back. You know, I, this was, this was great. I'm so glad I'm here. And uh, so, yeah, that's the other side of that. And that I was going to yeah. say, uh, uh, Brad Parker, it has to be sort of encouraging that even though the numbers were way down, those people that were there wanted to be there 
and had a good time. It's what Ken Weinstein always says. It's never not great. Never not great. I mean, if you do, if you do give it your, um, your, yourself and your attention and your, um, your time and your effort, it will pay you back uh, in, in more ways than you'll ever expect. Yep. That's it. But you, you're happy about the lineup. You think the lineup is, um, well, how would you describe it? I'll put it that way. Straight down the middle, Bonnaroo. It very feels Bonnaroo. like Bonnaroo again. Very, very Bonnaroo. I... Uh-huh. Nice. Yeah. Let me put. Let, let me throw something out at, at you. Bonnaroo or not Bonnaroo? Machine Gun Kelly. Not Bonnaroo. <laughs> okay. Yeah. At least we agree. Okay. <laughs> <Let's> agree. <laughs> but I will say this mm-hmm. year, so many people, fan or not fan, said that that was the best show they saw all weekend. Interesting. Now, how about this? When when you look back on on the this year and then what's coming up next year, um, what was the top of the priority? Like one, two, and three, the priorities going into this year. What were they for you? Let, first one for me and Corey, you tell me, but I think we're probably on the same page. First one was just gaining the trust of our fans back. Yeah. Um, from a customer service perspective, and uh, you know, because even before the even before the hurricane cancellation happened, like, you know, there was issues across the entire industry with refunds from 2020 and refunds from 2021 and just everything like fans were in a, well, everybody was in a really bad spot, but, and, you know, our staff was 90% laid off. And I mean, it was just a shitty time for everybody, but uh, first and foremost, it was gaining back that trust with our fans that we had had for so long and, and lost a little bit of a grip on it. I think that's the first. Second to me would be, uh, you know, finding the new fan and uh, acknowledging that we're moving past 20 years now and we've got to start turning over some new leaves in the sense of, uh, like Barry said, a lot of our OG fans, like they've got kids and 401ks and mortgages and all this shit now and they're just, they're in a different phase of life and we got to start finding we got to find Barry 20 years ago. We got to find him now. That's who we're looking for. So, yeah. Where does lineup then? Just to, I think to tack on to Brad's question, where does lineup in that list? I think number three would be, would be lineup. Okay. I mean, interesting. Yeah. Cool. Line, lineup is important, but in the context of where we were going into 23, it, it, for me, it was not the most important. If you would, if you asked me going into 2019, lineup was number one. Going into 2020, lineup was number one because we had a sellout. We were rolling into another sellout. That was important. But through the pandemic, like we had to, by necessity, shift our priorities a little bit because our fan base was in a rough condition. Interesting. You just had to get the car on the road. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Well, the, uh, our, our talent team that we have working on Bonnaroo, you know, it's – it's the guys from AC that have been doing it for 10, 15, 20 years now. Like, Steven it's and the Brian. same guys. They know the sweet spot. They're going to yeah. give it 100% every year. And, you know, if it doesn't resonate, it's not for lack of trying. Um, and it's it's not it's not for lack of even trying to respond to survey data and what fans are specifically asking for. You know, that's that's the first thing that they look at when they're going to make a lineup. Um, so it, I mean, a lot of that is, you know, climate and what's going on, you know, in the touring cycle and those kind of factors more than it is, you know, taste or, yeah. you know, being out but, of look at the end of the day, um, your musical preferences and my musical preferences, it's all objective. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what's not objective is dollars and cents. And, comfort. Uh, and and how and how I'm going to be spending my money, and if I'm spending it in the most wise and um, uh, uh, efficient way, and if you're giving me all the tools in the world to sort of make my own festival experience, uh, that goes a lot further than you know my personal preferences of music. To be yeah. totally honest, yeah. And I I want to say in regards to the dollars and cents directly correlating with you know, the the tickets in Cineru and the camping options. We went through this list with a fine tooth comb and we looked at what did people pay last year if they had this and this and what are they paying this year? And we made very careful not to raise any of those prices unless we absolutely had to because the cost of that pre-pitched accommodation went up to us 
And, you know, in, in most cases, we are able to get that price down. So, you know, this, this is not, this was not made as a decision from a, you know, revenue perspective. This was, this was made as a decision to better serve our audience and to create a better, more customizable experience. I think, I think, I think that's something that people will dig in and they can do the math and they'll see, you know, that that's exactly the case. But I did want to make a point of calling that out because it was really important to me and Brad to make sure that that's where everything landed. Yeah. And if, and if you're, if you're driving force, you know, the number one priority is making, you know, a fan experience and making it, um, more accommodating to, to human beings and the people that you, your, your perspective is right on. And, um, be the other thing too, that matters is being Bonnaroo people, by the way. Uh, I did, I think you guys will know what I'm saying and you'll read between the lines, but non Bonnaroo people can't do this. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I'm sorry to say it's just not something that you can understand from a spreadsheet and from the outside. If you just don't know the people, if you, if you don't know how they operate, I just don't know if it's going to, I don't know if you're ever going to figure it out. I agree. I agree. And you guys got to figure it out. So I, I wish you all the luck in the world, and I can't wait to see you, and I can't wait to be back. I really can't. Well, uh, I appreciate you guys taking time to talk with us about something that we love talking about. I'm, I'm glad that we finally got Russ to shut up a little bit over there so we could talk. And, uh, so it's, it, this, is his, <laughs> this is his second best episode. I, it really is. It is really good for us. But, but no, seriously, guys. Like this, a lot, this a lot of times, a lot I think of Russ is a lot of times. I think of Russ is the guy in the in the window during the Tom Green show, who just sort of sits back there with the coffee mug. <laughs> oh, really this is your yeah. Yeah, the PBR, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is your second best episode, Russ. Great yep. job. <laughs> Guys, let's uh, let's try and get back together after the lineup, and and you get the pods set up, and and you start yeah. integrating some some user experience stuff. I'd love to talk about that too. We haven't even got to that part, um, and the enhancements. I'm sure that you've made around the campsites. I'd love to get into that once we get close to the festival. Yeah, let's cool. do it again. We'll come. We'll definitely want to come back on after we get that lineup out there, see what you guys are feeling and what the sure. fans are thinking. And I think it's going to be uh, an exciting January. So. Thank you guys so much for, Let's for do it. doing this. This was great. Yeah. We appreciate Thanks, it. guys. You're the best. See you soon. There you go. Uh, a nice little past, present, and future explainer, a, a master class, if you will, from Brad Parker and Corey Smith. Uh, Barry, Taco, thoughts, debrief? I, I want to hear I want to hear what Russ thinks. He's he's uh you know, this is important. Oh, well, I'm ready. Okay. Go. Well, I mean, you know me, of course, I've got the bus and, you know, I'll sleep in the Walmart parking lot. I don't care. No, you, so you, you, start... no it's not that you will. You have. You have. <laughs> I have. I absolutely have. And I will again. So, uh, you know, when they start talking about curating all these, you know, add-ons and stuff, give me a parking You're talking lot. talking to the I'm wrong good. audience. Wrong yeah. guy. Yeah. Wrong guy. Um, yeah. All right. But, you know, it's interesting because it, uh, Festival kind of leaked some of this a little bit early. And, of course, the sentiment from everybody, because we're all conditioned for just bad news, right? You just you hear something, you're like, oh, okay, this is going to cost me more money, right? This is going to make it worse. So there was a lot of that kind of chatter. But I think after people hear what what Corey and Brad had to say, it's really going to like alleviate and kind of put that to rest as far as like, no, this is actually going to be a good thing. And in some cases, it could uh bring the cost down yeah yeah uh, yeah you're right we are so conditioned for bad news but we're also conditioned to hate change all the time yes. you know mm-hmm. god that's, bl- yeah, that's how dare nature. you change anything and why would you ever i want it the way yeah. that i want it and i hated it then and i'm gonna hate it now but damn it it didn't change <laughs> yeah. yeah no i think you're 100 percent right russ uh, and i'm the same like i said I said at the beginning of the conversation with them, when they called me several weeks ago to sort of uh, talk about this idea and, and see what I thought, my first question was who's getting screwed. I mean, that's, that Mm -hmm. was just, you know, cause I knew that's what's going to be in other people's minds. And it was certainly in mine. And, uh, you know, honestly, the person getting screwed, if that's the right word is the person who can afford it and doesn't care. You know what I mean? If you have the money, and want to buy the, the what do they call it, the Ritz-Carlton package or whatever he said, 
do yeah, it. If you want to check yeah. every single do box, it. that's your they money. Want to take do your it. money. But if you mm-hmm. want to do it, uh, you know, uh, on a budget, there's there's a way. Uh, also, the other thing that I wanted to to double back on and, and remind you of, if you have any questions based on today, let's try and like coalesce around one space to send it to so that we can send them to them immediately and then next week we'll come back and and we'll uh, get some of these questions answered before they're ask me anything on reddit um a good idea so so do, taco would you rather it come through the email account or twitter i guess email will probably be the easiest for everybody huh i think email would be easiest uh comments okay. at the what podcast.com uh, comments at the whatpodcast.com. You can also go to the whatpodcast.com and click on contact us and fill out the form. By the It'll way, do the same thing. By the way, I got a uh, another donation on the Venmo today on the uh, Lord Taco <laughs> oh. birthday present, Christmas oh. present extravaganza. What, yeah, very excited what, about that. What are we up to? We're up to twenty dollars. No, no, we were at twenty two before. Well, wait a minute, thought. we were twenty two. Oh, so we okay, went down. Yeah, then it'd be thirty two dollars. Yeah, it'd be thirty two dollars. Yeah. Somebody came strong. Thirty two dollars. Yeah, okay. Very excited. All right. Yeah. Somebody. So came. where does that put us? Are we to the oh, gold? Are Aaron, we halfway there? That's about five percent of the overall cost. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. It's gonna be great though. Act very surprised. excited. Very I'll take your word for it. I still have no idea what this is going to be. And you so. won't. And you will okay. not. Hey, you know, well, speaking of, all right, the, so speaking send... of the questions, yeah, I wanted to, mm-hmm. I thought, uh, not just about Bonnaroo, but about the show. If anybody has a comment or a question, yeah. Let well, us know. we'd prefer you to... just rate and review five stars. Do that. Do that. No, we prefer that you... first. And it'd then be... you can send a comment about how much you hate us. It'd be... But just <laughs> comment and say five stars and then send us the hate. It'd be fun to have questions as well. So send them to whatever taco said what he said yeah. comments comments at the what podcast.com what taco said and, com. <laughs> yeah and uh yeah send uh send your venmo donations to Ooh, brad stinks yeah. at brad stinks yeah man. all right anything else before we yeah. go big week nah. this week guys yeah okay oh. bye all right let's, let's talk to you next week love you bye Consequence Podcast Network.